top of the evening to you, ladies and gentlemen. So we're outside the shop at the workbench that I use for barring things up, and I was working on an axe handle, and my son was kind of asking me why I'm doing what I'm doing, and I thought maybe there might be other people that are curious why I have a pretty bright yellow painted axe handle strung through the back of my belt that holds my loggers tape for measuring logs and my wedge pouch just in case I need to do an attitude adjustment um, cognitive recalibration if you will on a tree because they don't want to go the right way by themselves anyway so this is going to be a two-part situation because I'm going to have to paint this in stages maybe three parts I guess technically um but and I also actually had a question come in just uh I don't know a while ago and then like I don't know a few months ago about my axe handle anyway so here we go it's important that you prep the axe handle now maybe we should talk about the colors first I don't even know I personally like the fluorescent yellow um, this turns a little bit green especially as it ages but the green is a completely different color than what you see anywhere in nature and this color actually will reflect sunlight much better than the fluorescent orange and they make a kind of a more red fluorescent orange as well this is the brighter one of the two and I'm gonna paint this axe handle I'm gonna do half and half and then we're gonna finish this off but it's going to be another day so as we go through the process um, this came from about 1982 um, working out on the coast in Oregon you get in those fur limbs and if you are hucking your axe up the hill sometimes they get in a brush patch and you can't actually find them especially if there's any fur limbs laying around anywhere on the ground that are still green if you were to it's kind of similar with you're out bucking on a tree and you lose your wedge underneath the fur limbs and I've actually lost my axe a few times out there because I do get pinched every once in a while and it, stuff just falls off and when they're buried in underneath um, some a wad of fur limbs and no sunlight's getting in there you basically can't see your axe unless it's a different color so this color you can have one beam of sunlight come in there and you're going to be able to see it that's why I chose this one uh, this color not so much now again where this came from so my dad was a jippo and he had a, we called it the Mayflower Tower, actually my mom's dad would run the yarder, it had wood frictions, a uh, big old bar for engaging the haulback or the main line, it was a double drum, we put uh, guy wires around the stumps with the cat and we would use railroad spikes to secure them just like they did when my grandpa was logging in, oh I don't know, the 40s let's say. Uh, he used to do high climbing, rigging, um, they would pull the spar tree to the next landing, he would work on rigging it and that kind of thing. So anyway, out on the coast you get in foggy situations, I had trouble sometimes seeing the top of the tube for road changes and I experimented and found that the darker the color the actual less you can see it um, so kind of started with this and was doing some of the falling as well in that period of time anyway I think you're getting the picture so back on track for what we're trying to actually talk about today so this axe like I said I already kind of started on it unfortunately and my son was asking it's an older version um, it's been around the block as you can see um, five pounder and so I'm gonna prep the whole handle and then I'm gonna paint half of it one color half of the other and then we're gonna look at the rest of this tomorrow but preparation we're gonna look at that a little bit right now there's a couple ways you can do that you can use some really aggressive sandpaper generally you're starting this process out when the handles brand new so it's not that situation that we see that we're dealing with right now where you're having to take 
the paint, the old paint off. Um, but you want some really aggressive sandpaper, the kind that's made for wood. You can basically wrap it like that. It makes it a lot smoother. So the paint actually sticks better if you're using a wire brush type situation. So we'll just knock this paint off real quick and then we'll have a little more discussion. And we can see we have chunks of the handle coming out. This handle is actually hammered. That's why I'm doing it. It cracked in the middle. And I didn't prep it perfectly, but you can see the crack. So it's going away. So I figured, what the heck. Um, didn't get all the paint off, but it doesn't matter because this is all going to be green. One thing that you have to consider if you use aggressive sandpaper on the handle, it's a lot smoother. Um, it's not rough like what you get with a wire brush situation. The paint actually sticks a little bit better. Part of the equation is you want to make sure and get rid of all the fine particulates so you're blowing it off with air. The dust essentially. And then the best thing to do, I try to do these in the summer as opposed to in the winter. Get yourself some contact cleaner and actually spray the handle down and clean it. That's what I do. Been doing it like that for years. In this case, it's going to be overnight. So we've talked about kind of the prep part of the equation. You're going to need some duct tape if you're going to, depending on how much of the handle you actually want painted, you can put a piece of duct tape around it and paint from there down. So for example. I have a five pound stro axe here. Doesn't get used much, obviously, but it's pretty sh pretty much a rube. And I only paint the end because when you're hucking this axe up the hill, 99.9% .9 of the time it lands because it's got a five pound head on it. It lands with this part sticking up. Very easy to see. So that's what I do on my big axes. If we're talking about the axes that I use and put in my wedge pouch belt essentially you can see this one's been rubbed off because this basically goes in back behind my backside and it'll be hanging out in here somewhere um, four pound Stroax here this thing's been around the block I actually lost this in a unit they burned it I went back in the spring and found it um, that axe handle lasted 13 years um, somehow the fire cured it. It was pretty awesome actually. So conceptually sometimes I'm running a three and a half pounder. This is a Baco if I'm in smaller wood. Same kind of a concept. You can see this one's been around the block a little bit as well. And so you get a lot of mileage out of the process but it is kind of a process to get it taken care of. So now that I've got my axe handle prepped, and like I was talking about a minute ago, if you use some kind of a mechanical abrasion situation, uh, you end up with a little bit rougher finish. And the paint seems like it adheres a little bit better. Um, that's just what I've noticed working on these, doing this for a long, long time, I guess, at this point. I'll get this handle taken care of with the paint we'll let it cure and tomorrow we'll actually check out why I use a certain color versus another okay so we went ahead we being me I went ahead and painted the bottom half of this axe handle with the orange and we're going to look at a couple of colors and understand why or at least in my interpretation why one color is better than the other one color in particular being the fluorescent bright neon color it says no doubt um, high visibility finish for vibrant color uh, yeah color of the cap indicates this is kind of a yellow so we looked at 
this is a comparison. It's not going to be perfect because this axe handle is going away anyway because it's broken. I think I mentioned that. One thing I was talking about with the mechanical removal of the uh, residual paint from the last session, it makes the handle a lot more rough. I think I might have mentioned that. Uh, I would recommend like 50 or 60 grit sandpaper. I like my hand to be able to slide on the handle when you're wedging or chopping personally. Um, if you mechanically remove uh, the sheen on the axe handle when it comes so the paint will adhere better, what you're going to find is it's really rough and then your hand doesn't slide very well. Um, it might work out good if you need extra help with the grip, however, for it to be a little bit more rough. So, we're going to spray this down real quick and then we're going to let it dry and then we're going to go ahead and test out my theory here. So, there's nothing special about the paint job. Um, you just basically paint it on. And it's not too cold this afternoon here. We'll let it dry and we'll check it out later when it gets a little bit dark so we can have a representative demonstration of what it would look like when you're actually out in the woods underneath a canopy. So we kind of have her painted up. Tried to get about the same distance on both sides so we weren't, one side wasn't a whole bunch more. And I'd probably take a little bit more time personally so I wouldn't have too much in the way of runs on this thing. But there you go. So we have her painted up. Now we're going to have to like take a brief intermission, let it dry, and we'll check out the rest of it here eventually. Okay, so we've finished off the axe handle. We can hopefully see that the coverage of the yellow isn't nearly as thick as what was with the orange. And I'm trying to explain visually why I run this color of paint on my axe handle and various other things, hard hat sometimes as well. Okay, we're on the axe handle color extravaganza again today. And so one of the things we painted, I painted it again. One of the things that's important to do when you're working with the yellow is you got to get pretty good coverage. It takes a few times. It doesn't coat quite as good as the orange does. I'm thinking you can see that. So, in the ongoing saga of what we're doing here, I'm trying to explain why I use this color paint versus this color paint. I'm thinking that even in a low light situation like we're dealing with now, it's easier to see this than it is to see the orange. Um, so we'll throw it on the ground and cover it up and start looking at it. Now I think there's more 
lambs on this side than there are on that side and we can see the orange shining through a little bit but there's a little spot of color let me get a pointer showing through right here that you can still see so it's pretty much covered up Now we're going to pause for a second and let it get a little bit darker and then we'll go at it again. As you can see we're in a pretty low light situation right now. We're going to take a second and turn on a light. See what we have there. Now we took off more on the bottom side with the orange. We can see that pretty good. And we're kind of watching as it gets super dark. And this may take a minute. It's been about four minutes, three, four minutes, and one of the things I was thinking about while I was kind of hanging around was the orange doesn't stay vibrant as long as the yellow either so even though it looks super awesome now it doesn't take long before the finish gets kind of dull and then it doesn't reflect the light as well the green doesn't seem to matter because it's so different than any color of vegetation that you'd ever find on the ground it sticks out like a sore thumb Here we're looking at a little light shining on the subject. Without the light we can still see the green fairly well. The orange is pretty much gone away. And now we're about five, six minutes into the process. Okay, so we're another two minutes into the process past where the orange went away and you can still see the green just a little bit on the left. 
So that would be why I use that particular color. Again, in review, we'll take a look with the light. They both look pretty good in the light. You can still see the green in the dark and you cannot see the orange in the dark anymore. So because we're in a low light situation, we're going to review real quick and take a look at what we have. We have the Rust-Oleum Orange Day Glow, bright neon color if you will, on the right and we have the yellow on the left. The yellow is definitely the color you want. Alrighty, thanks for watching this session. Have a blessed day wherever you might be on God's green earth.